<laughs> yeah, you're right. You know what? The girl would be like, hey, we're having a barbecue at my house. You want to come back? And the guy would just be like, yeah, that sounds cool. I'll be there. But then he's like, uh, you still couldn't he, he, quite. Not I'm sorry. It. I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, but sure, I'll be there. Okay, now that is some white dude. <laughs> well, you know what? Let me. <laughs> I, I, was, I even did it. I was trying to do it. Like, that is some white dude. Well, let me consult my. Let impression. me consult my planner. Hold on. Hold on. You went from the Richard Pryor white white, white guy voice to do it to a surfer dude. <laughs> Look, black people talk like this. Yeah, bitch, I'll be there. And white people talk right. like this. Well, let me just check my daily calendar. <laughs> and Jerry Tatum oh. talks. Like this, yeah, bitch. I'll be there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me, all right, all right. Take, all right. Take, take fifty-seven. Take it from the top. All right. The girl will be like, "Hey, we're having a barbecue at my place. You want to come over?" And the guy will be like, "Oh well, yes, madam. I would like to join you." <laughs> That's James Earl Jones. What is that? <laughs> I, I'm waiting for you to go to a British accent. <laughs> the original white man. <laughs> all, right, all, right. all right. Okay. So Chan right. Tatum, he would be like. He, well, he did, he did say this, and we were like, oh, you know, I want to disturb y'all. And it was like, damn. <laughs> they, they, it has, no, has nobody even tried to come I got, in? And I just, got mad love for the shorties. But. Yeah, <laughs> shit, baby, I'll be there in a minute. Y'all got ribs? <laughs> <You know>? Yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, I was just like, has nobody tried to pull this dude aside and, like, try to train him, you know? Like, try to just pull him aside and, like, be like, the, the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane. <laughs> he, he does need Rex Harrison to come yeah. into his life at this point. <laughs> what, what was that shit? What was that movie? Uh, 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 oh, uh, I'm thinking Pig Lady. Lady. Yeah, my, my Fair, fair Lady, Lady, yeah. yeah. They need to come in and do it. My Fair Wigger. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the rain and plane falls mainly in Spain. No, I'm saying? No, no, no. <laughs> you don't have to end everything with know what I'm saying. The ta- taming of the Channing. <laughs> 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 What's up, Governor? <laughs> yes, I do know what you're saying. <laughs> Jesus, you have to keep Christ. asking me that. Yeah. <laughs> but so, but I can tell you though, there's something about that which makes him seem just real. I mean, he doesn't seem like he's acting when he's talking to these girls. He looks like, <laughs> maybe because he's not. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. saying. That's, that's, I'm, that's a gift that he has. No, not but being that's able to what like I'm saying that Keanu Reeves thing. He's playing deep roles that they're not asking him to stretch for. Okay, yeah. okay. You, you're you're loving him now. But they're going to do what they did with Keanu Reeves when put they him in, him in Dracula. Play yeah, put him something. in a Shakespeare movie. Well, uh, when that and, day and happens. And see how you love him then. When yeah. that day happens, I'll call it, and he is going to be in a Spartans movie coming up They'll down the line. They'll put him in Taming the Shrew, and he'll be like, so this is the, you know, you need to be a proper gentleman. He'll go, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> no, he'll be like, fuck. He'll be like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah, but it, no, I, Hamlet. I, I, it is what it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but man, I, I, I like just be Hamlet. Hamlet apostrophe. Hamlet. I saw Hamlet brokenly. But man, you know something? I I do like him in this movie. He's not, and I and I will acknowledge like he's not pulling off the greatest performance. But I do believe this relationship between him, that's the thing. He's good with women in movies. You're not. He's not unlikable here. No. I'm just saying that I don't think he's got a lot of range. Is all no, I'm he saying. does not. And I'll give you that. And and but you know, and Plus with he just what, played a soldier in Stop Loss. Yeah, with what he's asked to do with here, and he G.I. doesn't. Joe. It doesn't ask him to stretch beyond his abilities. So no. it's not offensive to see him in this film unless you really can't stand like an hour and a half of man nipples because that's what's going on here. I'm sorry. No, I know. Yeah, you're <laughs> not I can't right. help but notice it. It's you're not, right. I'm not saying I liked it because I didn't. I'm just saying it was, it there. was there. Well, <laughs> it, It's like Dr. Manhattan's blue penis. <laughs> exactly. After a while. I know there's a movie around it, but that's all I can see. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like the script meeting went like this. I've got a great idea for for a movie, and they just showed a picture of his nipple. So they went, "That's good. Let's build something around that." <laughs> well, I tell you this: the, the, what I liked about the movie is like it just didn't focus on them because we do have this unexpected turn in it, which I liked. I liked that it threw this curve at me. But we have some actors in there that I really like a lot. Richard Jenkins plays his father, yeah. who. You don't know what's going on with him. I mean, there's something weird happening with him, and it's explained in the movie. But you just, you, you automatically can see this guy's making what twenty meatloafs on a Sunday, and there's only two people eating, and it's like, yeah, he's fucking, something fucking. He's wrong got with him. Aspergers. <laughs> he's an obsessive coin collector. Well, I didn't want to ruin it for anybody. Like, I, damn, you just earned the moniker of the new spoiler, right? No, come on, it's twenty <laughs> minutes into the film when they intro. Hell, twenty seconds after they introduce his character, you're like, yeah, that dude's, yeah, he's got something mentally. Oh, really? He's just making 20 meatloafs. Well, okay, I'm exaggerating. He's he comes in, he's making meatloafs and he's like, "Hey, you eating dinner? I made meatloaf." And Cam Tatum's like, "Yeah, you make 
meatloaf every fucking Sunday. All right, I'm gone. I can't yeah, well, it's a running joke of the movie. Wow. It's the dad. What a douchebag of a dad who makes you dinner <laughs> Well, no, no. Sunday. It's a running joke of the film where dad would be like, I, I, I made lasagna. He's like, yeah, I know. It's Saturday. But and because, like, he does the exact same thing. He's got a very strictured thing that he does every week, and he doesn't even understand why that's a little weird. Yeah. I would love to sit him down and tell him stories about my dad. We would all love to hear those stories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there, there is this very – yeah, his father uh, is a coin collector. You could tell they had that in common at one time, and somehow when he grew up to be a teenager, they parted ways. And it's it throughout the movie, you, it turns into a very sweet relationship, and you don't – they laid the hints of it at first. You don't see how strong it's going to be later on in the movie until they actually get, actually get to that point. And I was like, you know, maybe I'm sensitive to father issues at the moment, but I was just like, wow, you know, I was almost like really taken by that by that by that scene, or a, a certain scene in the film where they are really having a moment. And you know, there's certain things in the movie where I came in, I was rolling my eyes like anybody else. I was like, oh shit, man, can this get any cheesier and sappier? But it wasn't about a relationship as much as it was about John, Chad and Tatum's, Channing Tatum's character. And it was about a father and, lo- and son relationship. Okay. So I <laughs> – Now, Henry Thomas is in the movie. Who is he? Oh, yeah. Henry Thomas, he plays this this neighbor with an autistic kid. And I – yeah, you leaned over well, to me. It's you, not you the made kid. A joke. It's E.T. I'm sorry, I spoiled it. It's E.T. <laughs> yeah, he's, the, kid, the kid is coming around wearing like a shirt and some jeans, and he's like, oh, this is my son. <laughs> Someone in the background, Drew Barrymore, is doing lines of coke off the picnic table. <laughs> Where's Channing? Take off your shirt, motherfucker. Yeah, they, they had a cookout. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Henry Thomas from E.T. is in this, and I didn't recognize him. I didn't know this until I started looking at the movie that well, that, that was Henry like Thomas. Forty years old now. He's yeah. close to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So making me feel old just watching it. And I was like, oh man. Yeah, and he, but he's he's he plays a very subtle character in the film. I liked his performance in it. I mean, yeah. he's he's yeah. Again, he's another one of those very heartfelt people in the film. He's one of my favorite things about this movie. Actually, he has a very simple role and a very pivotal role in the plot. Uh, even though they, he only has so many scenes, but he's so inherently likable, and you really do. It makes you want to see more of Henry Thomas again. You're like, you know what? Yeah, this guy is fucking good. He's likable. He's a good-looking guy. He he he's still young, and he he could definitely have a comeback career at this point. Yeah, no, you he, you root for him too, and you do. After seeing this movie, if yeah. anybody sees this this movie, he will be probably the character that you walk away really liking. Yeah, uh, and it's, yeah, it's funny. I can see, you said he's walking around E.T. as a kid. <laughs> I can see them at the barbecue cookout. He's like pie, you know, it's like desserts. Well, except, are float, they're floating across the room. He's like, well, I tell you about that, son. <laughs> well, except at this point, E.T. would be like it's tall as him I mean, he'd be like his his gay li- well, he, not necessarily his gay living lover but his best friend who's wearing slacks and a, and a polo shirt <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no Henry Thomas is almost unrecognizable in this anybody who remembers him as a little kid in E.T. I like the movie man now I will say it's nothing special though I mean there's a lot of stuff in this movie where it just kind of plods along I don't I, there was nothing that in here that really excited me you know I watched it and I was like I enjoy this, but a lot of it is just uh, a lot of stuff I've seen before. That whole romance that's budding between them, that first that first half of the movie, it's it's not enough of a romance for us. It's so routine that we're not sitting up there like really rooting for them or we're not really even caring about it. We've seen this all done before and done a whole lot better. Yeah, it's like, dude, there's there's other chicks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the other thing is like it's two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks and they're falling in love. It's almost like she wrote him. It's like, damn, you know, it's really only two weeks that we've known each other. This yeah. movie depends on how you feel about, like, Hollywood's idea of love. Do you believe and in your heart that love is true? And as I say these words, like some Mariah Carey song starts floating up in the back of your head or something like that. You know, do you believe that after two weeks you can have the love that will last a lifetime? Do you believe that in your soul? If you're one of those people, then you're probably going to unreservedly love this because for those type of people, in other words, are you a chick <laughs> for those type of people? This is actually a decent, uh, decent enough film for that. But if you're somebody like me, who goes like, look, come on, man, it's just not the way it works. A, give us a little bit more than that. I mean, you, you, I understand who you're trying to sell this to, but really there's no way you could have stretched this out, made that early part of the relationship long enough that I'm w- staying with the story that I'm rooting for these characters and their relationship yeah. to work because all i'm seeing is two emotional irrational kids yeah and that's what it is if you're going in on a date if you're going in with love in your eyes and you just you're riding high on romance this movie's going to make you 
like it more. But if you're somebody who's just got dragged on a date, you know, it's like yeah. the wife is like, we haven't been to a movie in a long time. Let's go see Dear John. And you're sitting up there like, God damn. You know, it's, just gonna, it's, not, it's nothing special there for you. But I did enjoy it, though, for a lot of the elements outside of the love parts of it. So that's why I give it a rental. You know, it's funny. I, I thought you were going to give it a higher rating. I, I give it a rental, too, for the exact same reasons. Um, if I was, if this was more directed at me, I'd probably give it a higher rating. I'd say as well, if you're Iraqi war wife, if you've, you've got like a husband who's in the military, uh, then you're probably going to love this movie, actually. So really, like, after they've just been shell-shocked by the Hurt Locker, this might be the perfect movie for them to go see. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe they shouldn't see the Hurt Locker. <laughs> Saying, they might have seen it already yeah. and are already freaked out. This so this is a, something to help them come back down. Yeah, not really, because when they get into those battle scenes, they're going to freak out again. Ah! They're going to be like low crawling <laughs> to the seats. You know? <laughs> Damn it, Frank! Haji's out there. <laughs> you didn't actually go. <laughs> well, Cyrus, that was a gosh, good, good review that you did. <laughs> yeah, motherfucker, I just tell it like I see it. <laughs> it's like I'm in Freaky Friday. 